there you are. I was just watching you on Feel It Real Fun videos. And here, here I'm talking to you. It's just so cool. <laughs> you know, I, I, I remember the first time I ever did this. And it was just, to me, it's the coolest thing to go from emails. So I, I sort of, let's say, met you through email, manifesting mastery, a question, something like that. And then we do the live calls. And it's like, oh, my God, now i got a voice to go with, with that. Now I will never experience email the same. And now we've got. You know, I, I always call these like first dates. So here we are hooking up for a coffee, enjoying some fellowship, some friendship, ex exploring whatever. And it's like, whatever you and I do from ever and ever onward is never going to be the same. You know? It's true. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. I love it. It's great that we can do this. I see that is one of your works behind you. Uh, yeah. That. Oh, see, I always do this backwards. It's hard to see. Sorry, I'll try and hold it's it. All right. it's there beautiful. we go. Yeah, thank you. How can you? I, I find my work seems to be about helping people learn and explore how other people learn and explore the world. Mm. And and when I look at your stuff, I took up sketching years ago, and I'm not that quote unquote good at it but I love it. And when I look at what you do and how you bring forth from, uh, I'm assuming that's, that's graphite and various papers with, from what I've seen, how, what, it, what is it like to bring forth that? Because in Genesis, God brought forth things, quote unquote. And I want to know how do you bring forth what you bring forth? Cause it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Well, First thing is that if you love it, you're good at it. If you, yeah, if you love, if you love your drawing and your sketching, then you're, you're good at it. That's, Fair enough. that's secret number one. And number two, it's such an interesting question. I guess, I guess it's, it's just, it's just like manifesting. It's actually like that. You're, you're bringing something forth. I mean, it still has to exist in imagination first before anything can come through on paper or paint or something. I may not know what it's going to be when it's finished, but it starts with a desire. You just have a desire. To me, it's, it's like, um, it's communicating, right? It's like someone who takes a photo of something they want to share with people. I just, I just prefer to do it this way. I take photos, but I like, I like, the act of doing it. It's um, you get to spend time with the subject. So I guess that's how I do it. I have the desire to do it. So I do it. I guess I can't you explain get, it better than that. <laughs> you, you, you get to spend time with the subject. Yeah. Uh, you take me right, you take right, you take me right to where I tell people I don't feel it real to make something happen. I feel it real to feel something. Yeah. And, and then, you know, if I feel something sufficiently enough, it will, my body will get to feel it, you know, as in the physical as well. And it's like, uh, to me, it's the ultimate answer to force. Because mm -hmm. if I tried to force something out, you know, using a crayon and paper, it's just going to make a mess and snap the crayon versus if, if the, if, if the, if the, if the evoke, if the evoking happens. Mm -hmm. If the expression happens, um, yeah. mm. <laughs> it is like that. It moves you. If it moves you, that's why you want to do it. So you see something, you think, yeah, that, how would I capture that? How, what would I say? Could I get something across? I have no idea. I never have an idea really um, when I do get started. You just have the desire. And then you just find, like, just if you have a desire to sing or you have a desire to play, and it's it's like that, I'll see something. And I see it all the time. This is how I experience my world. I walk around and I see beautiful things everywhere. And I think, wow. And it's not that it's beautiful, but it's there's something interesting about it. And it's part of the, it's part of the world. And I thought, oh, maybe others would see that too. Maybe they haven't seen that. And it would be interesting to show them. So you just... You, you do have to spend time with it because 
you have to, it's not even an understanding. How do you put this? I love the pursuit that you are having right now yeah, because it's yeah, the pursuit yeah. to, to place it into words. It's the pursuit yeah. to put it on a canvas. It's the pursuit yeah. to really explore feeling it. Wow. Uh, I, I never knew I'd be a daily podcaster. I know I wanted to podcast as a marketer. So it's like, yeah, hey, I'm going to podcast. That sounds like fun. I could probably do it once a week. Yeah, that sounds good. It'd be good for business. Makes sense stats wise and all that dumb shit. Yeah. And then at some point I fell in love with doing a daily little five to 10 minute podcast. And I never know what I'm going to talk about before I talk about it. But I always imagine before I get out of bed, I find that feeling of the podcast rocked. Um, I, I, fi I find the experience of you or somebody telling me that one really gave to me. And I know when I find that by the time I, I sit down in the portable disposable hot tub and push the button, I know it's going to be good. And it's that, it's that evoking, that exploring, that, and that finding out how does it weave together. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, wow. Yeah. yeah, it's exactly, that's exactly what it is. It's exactly that. Um, you know, so you, you look a lot. That's what I notice. You you look a lot to do it, right? Um, mm. I used to get told crazy things when I was younger, like, oh, it's good hand-eye coordination. It's like, well, not really, actually. Um, you can train it just like you would with, you know, a sport or, you know, a musician or anything like that to feel like you can do it quicker or with a bit more ease. But it's much more fun to just sort of show up and explore and see what happens, um, so I guess it's like a bridge. You get to watch a bridge in action is, is another way to look at it. So you have the desire. You don't know what the finished product is, but you, have, you know what you feel like it's going to be like in the end. And then you just get to figure it out as it comes together. So it's great. I love it. Actually, I can't imagine life without doing it. Uh, this is where I'm going to ask you the impossible question. How many and how long? Have you done how this? many and how long? Uh, I always drew when I was little. That was my favorite thing to do. I always wanted to be drawing or painting. And then I would sort of fall in and out of it a little bit. But I mean, let me think now. I mean, for those little drawings that you see me posting, I'm probably somewhere up to, for just those ones, about 150 now. But I mean, I did so many more before that. It must be thousands. I can't even count it really. So, um, yeah, but I've always, I've, I've all, I always, it's just how I look at the world. I look at everything and I see, oh, it's a painting. Oh, there's a drawing. And I can see like a hundred in a day, easy, everywhere, everywhere. It's just all around me. I'm just like, ooh. And it's not, I don't know why, actually. That's the really funny part. I can't tell you why. I just, it's just what I see. I always have, even when I was really, really little, I'd be like, ooh, I want to share that with somebody. How do you share that? You could take a photo. Some photos do it justice, but it's something of you will come through in the art and you can't help it. You, if I saw your sketches, or your drawings, I'd be like, oh, look, it's 20. I can see yeah. him. There he is. It's there. You just, you cannot help it. So people talk about, oh, I need a style. I need this. It's like, no, no. If you just keep showing up, it's already there. You just have to nurture it and let it do its thing. And then you get to discover what that is. So <laughs> in law enforcement, they talk about forensics and you can't get away from forensics. We watch different cop shows and so on. I'm a, I'm a fan for some reason. And when people screw up the forensics, and my head just goes, oh, no, they should have just burned the car. They're not going to be able to wipe it down. You just, you just toss, you know, 32 ounces of petrol and you burn the sucker, right? <laughs> and, and, it, and, it's, and, and even that's not foolproof, but it's a lot, a lot quicker, right? Yeah. And it's interesting because when, when I think about dream-driven day, crass commercial, of course, when I think about having a dream-driven day, uh, I think of two things. One, your your fingerprints better be all over it. Mm. You're, 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 like you said, when you would see someone's sketch, you can see them 
in the sketch. You can tell, you can learn so much about them, their perception of the world. So I, so I, so I really want people to have their fingerprints all over their lives instead of walking around like they are in a crime scene with rubber gloves on and their hands in their pockets, you know, people live their entire lives like that. And here we got the loogie going on and people walk around wearing rubber gloves. And I go, unbelievable. It's just symptomatic of how they're living their lives. They're it's hiding. Crazy. They're, yeah. It's crazy. The other thing I think about Emmett, because Emmett will prevent Bruce from jumping up on the, out the, the lounge suite that we sit on outside. And at some point he'll walk over and he'll like pee on the post and just come back. And it's, and, it, and it's Emmett just going mine, <laughs> mom and dad are mine. And, uh, and Bruce will go, I'm going to trick you. And Bruce will trick him away. And then Bruce will run in and just go, I don't care. You peed on the post. I'm at <laughs> <laughs> but but, it, but, it, but I look at all this stuff, and as a as loving teacher, that state gets all these little micro lessons because it's just funny. Because it's like, right, you know, if if you really claim your territory, if you really get your fingerprints all over everything, I can't help but go, oh, there's Suzanne in her dream driven day, mm-hmm. because your fingerprints are all over it, and it's, and 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 and. and it, the way you live it is all is all is all through it. And that's like, what more could we ask for as artists? What more it's could we true. ask for? You can't. Yeah. Getting to getting to see the artist through the artwork, that's that's the beauty of it. Because it's you see something that you can't experience any other way. It's like hearing the musicians through the music. <clears throat> hmm. Are you a musician too? No, but I guess okay. I guess if you if you like art, you just you you start to love all of it. Love music, yeah. love movies, love books. You know, it's all it, dancing. It's all sort of mixed together because it's people communicating. It's just so much fun to watch, and you get to see something uh, you never get to see any other way or experience. It's all it's it's a way to experience imagination through a different way. I guess that's how I see it, anyways is uh, music's an imaginal act that you get to listen to. And a play is an imaginal act that you get to participate in. And when you read a book, I don't know about anybody else, but I see the characters in my mind and I hear the voices and, you know, or I see the person doing what they're writing about. And it's such a great way to just have a different experience. I, I love reading books that are part of a series, like, I, I always suggest to people read stuff that doesn't have anything to do with your spiritual or business growth. Read some fiction. Yeah. Just, you just read something, you know, read a cookbook, but make sure you read some fiction. And I'm a massive fan of uh, Harry Bosch, uh, the character. Uh, I forget who wrote the darn things, Michael Connolly. Oh. And, then, and, and what I love about Harry Bosch is there's like 20 or so books and as soon as you fall into the Bosch universe, it, he's really represented the Bosch universe really well. And what had me fall in love with Harry Bosch, the cop, who's the main character of the series, is Harry lives by the code, everybody counts or nobody counts. And he's a, hom- he's a homicide detective. Everybody counts or nobody counts. And it's like, that's mine. That's, That's so my good. Day. Yeah, yeah. Right now, well, you're the most important person in my universe. But everyone same. counts. Everyone counts. That's so beautiful because it reminds me of when you would talk about when you imagine lovingly for another, you're lifting their cross, but it also lifts your cross. It's kind of the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, isn't that amazing? And you get yeah. to really see a character across the series, don't you? Is how many situations can you put them through? That's kind of a creative challenge right there. So, it, you know, so it's funny you mentioned that because the Bosch series, I guess, is officially ended. So I'm reading this other series about another cop written by the same guy. And so he's brought Bosch into it as a tertiary character. Oh, and now, cool. And now Harry's retired. He's got a bum knee. He's in his 70s. But he still lives by everybody counts or nobody counts. Everybody counts and, or nobody counts. And, and it's like, 
this guy is still, and he's still doing cop things, right? He's not supposed to be, but he's still doing cop things. And it's like, he's living his dream driven day. Everybody counts. That's it. That's his, or nobody counts. counts. It's like, wow. I just may have discovered a little master key by reading it. I, by reading now two different series about cops in California, uh, how how, and, but it, but it's it's how we as human beings, we, we we can fall into something lovely and explore and express and uh, uh, attempt to put it into words like I am very clumsily right now, <laughs> but I've been enjoying the crap out of it. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, it's just amazing where you can find something that's this golden nugget that you just would not expect, but you found it in these great detective novels. How cool is that? I, I would have never guessed like you. That. No, now the, right? Now the, the, the funny thing is I came to them after watching the TV series because we oh, went into lockdown. But we went into lockdown here and like everyone else on the planet, I got Netflix, you know? And so it's like, Oh, well, who's this guy? It's a cop series. It's got good reviews. It's got five seasons. I'll watch it, you know, because I don't like watching a one series show. Because again, after one series, you're done with the universe. It's like now I got to go find another universe. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you, you give me something with six or seven seasons, and I and I'm just in love, you know. Well, it's that richness of experience, isn't it? You just get to really see all the different, how does this play out and how does this play out? And so it's just amazing how a really good series, people can just find so many different inventive ways to keep it going. You're just like, well, I wouldn't have seen that coming. And uh, what's it like if you put them in this situation? So really well-written series like that. Yeah, it's gold, isn't it? Just everybody get, counts everybody, or nobody counts. Everybody counts or nobody counts. I love wow. that. I think about my own life and when when I've had yeah, not a mantra, you know, maybe a motto, I don't know, a, a guiding principle, but whatever it is, mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's like it really um changes everything. I I I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one of mine if you tell me one of yours. You want to play? play sure because i don't know if i know one but we'll see what happens cool uh i'm silly enough that i changed my name because of one of mine oh because i really when i was a little boy my mom would get worked up about the dishes and i would tell her there's more to life than the dishes i was just a little fella back then which is not a good idea when you're little and you're dependent (laughs) upon someone for food yeah telling them that they're wrong (laughs) Yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not the brightest bulb in the box some days, but but I realized that was the foundation of, of me really exploring what's important. Mm-hmm. And for me, what's important is helping people live from some sense of vision, having some sense of clarity. And that led to my name change when I was 41. Wow. So, so, so that whole thing of Mr. 2020, it's all about vision. It's all about clarity. It's all about having focus in your day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that was that. And, and I swear to God, and I changed it, not because I wanted everyone to know, but because I wanted to remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty easy if you make it your name. <laughs> it's it's pretty easy if you make it your name. <laughs> so, 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 so there's my story. Uh, what's a principle that, that guides you? What's a principle that you live by? What's, what's your everybody counts or nobody counts? Everybody counts or nobody counts. It's not funny. Let me think for a moment. With the, um, I went to art school and we went on a trip to New York and it was a fairly big group. There was something like about 30 of us and we walked everywhere. And we, when you go into galleries or museums, there's a tendency to start to wander away from the group and get left behind. So we came up with a motto, which is no one gets left behind. So we'd always sort of make sure to check for each other. And, you know, did you see so-and-so? Oh yeah, she wandered off into that section, et cetera. And that's fairly recent, but I, you know, it's funny. I guess with me, it was always about family. When I was younger, my family was really important to me. I cared very, very deeply for everybody in my family. I was always concerned about their well-being. And I spent a lot of time with my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, who would tell me 
lots of stories about family. And what always stuck with me was they would tell me stories about the war, World War I and World War II, but especially World War II. And the thing that they said that got them through the war was community. They said everybody looked out for each other. They said everybody made sure everybody was okay. You knew your neighbors. If you stood in line for the bus and you did not have the change that day and the person in front of you did, they paid for you, you got them on the next round. And they, and they just always sort of repeated that, you know, you always look out for each other. And so that, that scouting principle is, is the fact that also looking out for yourself is looking out for other people. And so that's like, it's the best way I can explain it. That's the thing that always sticks in my mind is hearing those stories about that's how you got through an unimaginably difficult, challenging time is you just, you cared and you showed up and you always just made sure everybody was there and together because you never knew if a bomb was going to wipe out the house next to you the next day and those people were no longer there. And so, yeah, stories like that, but they laughed a lot. They had fun. They had dances. They, they didn't let life stop them for anything. They said, you still showed up every day and life was still there. It didn't stop. What country was that in? In, in the UK. So my family lived is from Glasgow. Yeah. I'm the first Canadian actually in my family. So they were from Glasgow. So Glasgow being a port city, sits on a river in the ocean side and it had docks. Right. If it was a dock city, it got bombed. So Glasgow was bombed, not as heavily as London, but pretty badly. So yeah, I, I had a auntie born during the war and my grandma said she ran, it was one of the worst bomb raids. She ran through the streets. The wardens are shouting at her, you know, you have to get to shelter. And she's like, no, nope, my sister's giving birth. I'm going to be there because they gave birth at home then. They didn't go to the hospitals. And they said uh, they couldn't go to the shelter. My auntie Anna was born and they had to put her in a drawer and partially close it because that was the safest place to put her with the bomb going off. So, yeah, I think about what we're going through right now and just life in general. And that just seems to always be a principle is that, yeah, if you look out for yourself and you look out for others, you somehow all come through it together. You know, so you, I'll point this out because you may or not notice it. Uh, so in Dream Driven Day, you were one of the most active people in your group. Was so, I? <laughs> yeah. So, okay. so what we do for like these calls, we, we, we gather, we put the names of the most active people in a hat, essentially. Uh, the ones that we just feel that were the most active, gave the most whatever, and we draw from there. And it's like, yeah, let's give them a call. Let's, because yeah, we want to give back to you guys. Because well, we can't help but fall in love with you. We, we can't help but just go, you know, all this giving, we've got to give back. And so, and so here, uh, and, and like you were, uh, if I could spike the hat, I probably would have given you two entries. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, I really, <laughs> but I really wanted to do one of these calls with you because of how you gave to the group. Because it, it, like, it really was not just, uh, okay, here's my... Facebook group that I've got to post to once in a while. Uh, you, you really showed up. You really gave, you really brought people together. And, and, and I want to acknowledge that because it may have been a survival thing, two generations, three generations ago in your family, but you took it from, from survival to something way up on that uh, scale. You know what I'm talking about? The, the survivals at the bottom, uh, self actuation, self actualizations at the top yes. i'm only drinking fizzy water <laughs> at five in the moment at five in the afternoon i probably should be drinking scotch so i can sound more coherent but 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 really the way you gave you've just you were talking you demonstrated your principle in the group and here we are here's me demonstrating my principle because i want people to learn from you and from me, and I want people to connect with you. I want people to know about your work. I, 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 the This to me is so vital because we walk around in this culture when we put, we put on these blinders. Yeah, and, and it's like, yeah, how can I let the news blind me? How can I let family pressure blind me? How can I let what's right blind me? 
And it's like, no, how can you, how can you really relax and open up? How can you touch with your eyes? There's a reason why we got all those goofy little assignments in there. <laughs> touch with your eyes. You know, like what? Well, yeah. I love the private emails I get. What do you mean? I said, take it to the group. Why? Because I said, so. oh, touch with your eyes. That's a drawing ah. exercise actually. And you can do that. That's a fun one to do is you, and it's one that's often taught in, in schools is you just look at something. It could be anything, a plant, a chair, a person, anything at all. And you don't look at the page or your pencil or your pen. You just look at what it is that you're drawing and you just let your eyes crawl just like a little bug or ant or something over what you're drawing. And you, you find that it's amazing you don't even have to look at your paper and it's not that it's going to look like the thing but it captures this essence of the thing but you got to spend time with something and you touched it with your eyes and then it translates into something on paper oh it's fantastic it's it's just a great way to spend time with something you really get to know if you think you've looked at a flower i guarantee you've not looked at it until you've spent time just touching it with your eyes and letting your hand translate that onto a piece of paper. It's beautiful. You, you, you use your eyes like a tracker does. I and do? So you do. Oh. So, so when the average person walks and looks at the ground, their, head go, their chin goes down. And they look at the ground. When they look up, they look, lift the head up. When a tracker looks at the ground, they actually look down a little bit with their eyes. And when you, so the chin <laughs> stays, I'm uh, my eyes move. <laughs> so, so the chin stays somewhat up and the eyes actually move down a little bit. Oh. What happens is that accesses it through kinesthetic. Staring straight ahead, you're just seeing. Looking and if if you just look straight ahead and you lift your chin up, that, that activates feeling in a weird way. Oh, it but does feel better. different. Yeah. yeah it, 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 it opens up the heart. It's fascinating because it's, it's, I, I, I noticed years ago when I was learning from trackers, different things, I, I noticed all the normal people like that bend their head to look at the tracks. And I noticed that there's look down, keeping their chin up. And I'd be like, what's that do? Cause I'm always asking that question. What's that do? How do they do that? What else are they doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm that two-year-old, but that two-year-old never died in me. Yeah, that, that switch, good thing. I, I, I glued it on, you know what I mean? I, I put anything I could to keep that switch going. But God, it makes it so much funner. Oh, so I want to point that out. You, you, you're a tracker as well as an artist. Oh, you track things that most I people miss, notice. I'm sure. Maybe. Uh, that might be true. I, I notice if you're... If you're drawing or painting it's true you do have to sometimes you can't move too much when you're doing it because you have to keep that position so you don't lose where you were I mean you can move around and some people do but maybe I just I don't know I never even knew that before it's cool. really interesting now I'm going to notice if, that I'm doing that I, I'll toss all sorts of goodies at you do you know who Bucky Fuller is I love you. Bucky Fuller yes so, Bucky Fuller's so, a genius everybody should so, know so, who he is well, that's that's another reason we stuck him in Triple D. Everyone should know who Bucky is. I just mentioned him. Some people run with him. So, so when you watch Bucky Fuller, there was a, an interview he did that's on YouTube. I think it's with Werner Erhard and somebody else. And you can watch Bucky whenever he's talking. He is moving around inside of this fishbowl of everything. <laughs> <laughs> And, and he's just so like, it, it, so he's not sitting there diagramming things out. He's actually swimming inside of everything. And it's so delightful because here's a guy that's wearing pop bottle glasses who shouldn't have any visual at all. And he's swimming around looking and touching everything while he's speaking about it. And, and the guy's an absolute genius. Oh, he's a genius. Yeah, completely rethought the entire world around him fascinating his uh designs or he designed this um it was like this mobile home that was completely self-sufficient but it would have like completely reduced how the environment like everything was recycled it was way ahead of his time he was absolutely genius but part of that i think was that he could he could look at the world with a different way 
and see things and say, oh, I could use that differently than how it's been seen and used before. I suspect he saw it in all the different ways at once. Like a, like how a, yes. like a bee has a compound eye. That's right. Yeah, Bucky, Bucky was in all of them. <laughs> That's probably true, actually. I mean, he, he definitely made an impact on other artists. They couldn't figure out where he got most of his ideas from. So, I mean, he, yeah, he was really such an amazing, amazing person. And the, the geodesic domes, those are him. Yep. So such a genius idea. I mean, so simple, but he's the one who thought of it. It's always I simple love, after I, the fact. Yeah. It, and, and, and the quote unquote sad thing to me is we're still not using them. No. It's, it's no. like, you know, like we, we had some massive fires here, like the year before I came here. And my first thought was they should mandate geodesic domes in these high fire prone areas. You know, if you made them out of the right materials, you'd have fireproof homes. It's true. It's and, true. And, and, it's true. But instead, they, they, re, they rebuild all these homes out of timber. It's yeah. like, why, why would you do that? That's yeah. crazy. Square it's, homes um, made of timber. Made of timber. And these, these areas where fires just run through, like they're, you know, there's oil on the ground. It's just crazy. So yeah. I, I don't know. There's always that old joke that artists are ahead of their time. Certainly not all artists are, but there's some truth in that. There's some artists that you see that just were ahead of their time. And we still haven't caught up to them. And who knows how they thought of what they did or how they did it, but they did. There's lots of people like that. And just um, that's why I think it's so interesting tell to always be exploring. Two. Sorry? Tell me, tell me one or two of them that I may not know about. Oh, gosh. Let me think about that for a moment. Cool. Uh well, there's the really, there's Leonardo da Vinci. That's still crazy how he came up with a lot of those inventions that he did. It was just incredible. But even, um, and I won't remember the name of it, um, the artist, but there's, um, when you see uh, like medieval paintings and you see the figures. So whoever started painting like that, someone once wrote, they said, so imagine you're a medieval person and you go into a building and you see these images, they said, well, you're used to it now because of course you're used to seeing images of people, but they never would have seen one before. Think how genius that is. How did somebody think right. up how to draw a human face to portray an idea or a story to somebody who'd never even seen their own image ever in their lives, maybe in like water, but they didn't have mirrors. And to think that people would walk in and that's the first time they actually saw a depiction of a human being, it just kind of blows your mind, actually, when you think that someone had that idea and said, oh, I'm going to do that. And you're like, wow, that's amazing. And now we just take it for granted. But it, um, it really had an impact on how we see the world. We don't think about it, because we're used to it. You would probably know much better the names and stuff. Than, but when I was growing up, my mom bought the World Book Encyclopedia. And so I spent, you know, since we didn't have the internet back then, I, I, I lived inside the World Book Encyclopedia. And I remember studying paintings. And it was like you had the era where paintings were all sort of flat. Mm. And then suddenly th 3D representation showed up. Yeah. And as a little boy, I'd go, wow, like what happened? And so it was probably about two, three years ago, I was reading a book by some neuroscientist. I, I read like seven books at once. And this neuroscientist said that they believe that before then, human beings didn't have the capacity to internally represent 3D. They only represented things in two dimensions. Oh. And at some point in human history, we became possible to represent things in three dimensions on the inside. And I just, my, my, my noodle went, wow. True or not, who knows? But who just knows? the ultimate explanation was enough for me to go, right, yo, uh, okay, I, 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 I can get it. It's, so, it's sort of like some people don't understand when I say, yeah, so you want to make money online. You want to be a coach. Take eight hours and write a 30-page book. Use that because a book is the new calling card. And if you can get someone to buy it or if you give away the first 10 pages, I don't care. 
but it's eight hours of time for a 30 page book to be a coach and actually make some money better yet, make three of them. Right. So if you do it one day a week, you could do that in, in a month, eight hours a day, you know, not hard. You know, so that will be like one week, another week, another week done. And it's like, most people I tell that to that tell me they want to make money as a coach won't do it. And I get why, because most of them don't realize you, you got to stop trading time for dollars. If you're going to stop trading time for dollars, in my experience, what I did is I took eight hours and wrote 30 pages. I sold it once. Well, let's say it took seven hours. I sold it once for $7. I made a dollar an hour. I sold it twice. I'm up to $2 an hour. I sell it a thousand times. It's a thousand bucks an hour. That's not bad money. Now we're talking fun. Yeah. But it, but it just, it, you, you have to almost do your head in. The old man must die is the phrase Neville uses. But it's almost like you have to do your head in with how you think about everything. Yeah. And, and, when, and, once, and, and when you're willing to do that, then how you sketch, how you shoot a photo, how you do anything uh, changes. It's a really good point because art, technically speaking, is kind of impossible. You can't actually show three dimensions on a two-dimensional surface. It's re- it's just an illusion. It's still just marks on a paper, we're, we're but you believe it. We're yes. filling in all the blanks. Yeah, yeah. You're so, we're saying, so, so, oh, it's that. <laughs> so my uncle turned me on to a book. So when I was a kid, I don't know why, but I got into all that weird stuff like. Uh, so, uh, subliminal programming on television. So they take the 30 frames a second or whatever, and that insert things and so on. I'm mean, like, wow, man, this is interesting. So, and we studied it in high school for some reason. They mentioned how they did it in movie theaters and so on. The one priest talked about that. But my uncle Mike turned me on to this book, and it basically said this for you to watch television, and we're talking the cathode ray tube days, you have to actually dumb yourself down a little bit. So you don't see all the flashing. Oh, really? And, and, I, and, and I thought about that because whenever I was going through the promise, the Kundalini awakening kind of thing, I remember I was working as a telemarketer at one point during all that. And I walked into the room where they had like 40 screens and they're all flashing like crazy. And I said to my buddy, Chad, we always sat next to each other. I'm like, fuck, what, what's wrong in here? And he's like, what's wrong? I says, look at the screens. He goes, yeah. And I realized he doesn't see it. Oh, it's uh, yeah. like the Matrix. Wow. Exactly. Yeah. I was seeing all these flickers. I was actually getting sick. So I had to like, right, right, just, just tunnel vision out, just sit there and just try to run the script from memory, all that good stuff. But it was fascinating because years later when my Uncle Mike turned me on to that book and I saw yeah, that to, in order to watch a cathode ray tube, you have to dumb yourself up, dumb yourself down enough to the point where it looks like a continuous image. And I thought, wow, Whoa. Here, here we are exploring, filling in the blanks. And so many people say, I can't imagine. Well, I have to imagine to see you. I, like you said, I can see this yeah. flat two-dimensional thing, but I'm the one that makes it three-dimensional. That's right. It's oh. true. Wow. It's so fascinating. I love having my head get done in, actually. I'm a <laughs> bit of a junkie for it because it's always great to just be like, wow, how did anybody think that up? It's just, I, I, I always like the idea that you're, it's going, your brain is going sideways and just sort of expanding with these possibilities. Or um, I think the Manifesting Mastery one that just the lesson that came up recently was the one with the tubes. I love that one. The one with the yeah, tubes, yeah, it's like, yeah. we can't really, we can't really see. And yet, so it's true. If you really sort of spend time watching and just observing, you'll notice that a lot of people really do just expect that the world just is the way that it is. And yet it's, I love finding out things that just sort of prove that it's not, you know, it's so much more than it could possibly be. I mean, think about it at, at some point, you know, there was no such thing as color. It had to be imagined up. Yes. Who imagines up color? Think about that. You can't even describe color to somebody if they've never seen it before. But, but it was thought up. It was imagined. It just blows my mind. 
It's like that, right? It's like people don't see the flickering screen. And some people have imagined up not being able to see red and green, colorblind. That's right. Yeah. Wow. And it's, I, I know it's great. And it seems, but it's, they're so matter of fact about it. Yep. It's a thing. You're just like, wow, really? Except I can't really prove that the blue that I see is the blue that you see. Oh, now we're back to when I was six. Oh my God. I drove the nuns nuts with that one. <laughs> Did my, you? Mother, my, my mother first and then the nuns. Cause it, cause my mom was probably done with it by the time I hit first grade. So I went to public school for kindergarten. Mickey Patton was there. Mickey Patton was nuts. Love him now, but he was just a nutball at six and seven. So, so I went to Catholic school, first grade, first grade. I swear to God, my little hand goes up and it's like, how do you know? Right. How do you know my blue is not the same as your blue? How do you know it's not green or whatever? That went over like a ton of bricks. It was year, it was year three. I actually stretched a little again. I was traumatized over that one. Did year they hit three, you? Uh, it was Catholic school. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, th- I don't think I ever got hit, but the psychological trauma was there, okay. you know. So, so then, then we were doing this thing. Maybe it was even the same year. I don't know. It feels like it was a couple of years, but anyway. So we're coloring in these trees, and they had these. Remember the old blue mimeograph sheets? Oh yeah. They, they had like a, yeah, they, yeah. It's photocopying from the seventies. So, so they, so they, so they give us this sheet, and it's got this <laughs> blue outline of a tree on it. And the nun says, "All right, here's what I want you to do." Color in the outside of the trunk, color in the inside of the trunk, color the outside of where the leaves are, color the inside of the where the leaves are. So I get out my yellow crayon and I, and I do the trunk on the outside and I fill it full of brown. I get out my purple crayon. I do the outside of the leaves and then I get out the green and I do the inside and little Cheryl's hand goes up. And I'm just thinking this can't be good, right? She, she, she doesn't know how to lift her hand up. She's not that bright. So <laughs> the nun comes over and she goes, he's doing it all wrong. And the nun says, what are you doing? And I says, I'm doing what you said. I'm going on the outside and the inside. And I said, well, why is the outside yellow? I said, well, the outside of the trunk is yellow because it's yellow. And why is the outside of the green green or purple? She says, because it's purple. Have you ever seen a tree? So the next thing you know, I'm in front of the eye, the eye doctors, right? <laughs> so <laughs> they, 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 they want to see if I've got like a, a retinal detachment or whatever. That's right. Oh. And, I, and, I, and I start telling the doctor, yeah, it's sort of like you, you know, like around you is a little, <laughs> and it's like, uh, I didn't see auras again until I was in my 20s. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the doctor, oh. Jay, basically said, stop doing that. That's, That's bad. Really You're going to scare your parents. Like, bad know, or parents or bad. Like, <laughs> yes. All right. I, mean, I, I won't see auras again. <laughs> Not for a while. Right. Oh my God. That's crazy. And yet there's trees that are yellow and purple. Have they never seen a willow tree? Their trunks are yellow. <laughs> well, it was, it was Catholic school. So. That's right. They're very dogmatic. I have a coworker who went to Catholic school. He still hates nuns so <laughs> to this day. I'm just mentioning, he's like, mm. he's got some very words to say. Cringe. <laughs> Traumatic experience. That's right. I don't think Barry's ever call. gotten over it. My mom told me she ran to one of the nuns the other day and she said she thinks she remembers me. And I says, well, when you run into her, you tell her I remember her. That's <laughs> right. You never forget those nuns. I'm sure about that. They burn themselves into your brain. Well, that's uh-huh. sad. What a hoot. I, ima- I, I, I imagined up the perfect combination for me. That's for sure. My mom, <laughs> my dad, the nuns. Yeah, all all the it's 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 like when you graduate from the Shaolin Temple and you go through the twelve gateways of hell or whatever. <laughs> right. like, so, yep, yeah, I I got all the support I needed and all the opposition yeah. I needed. Perfect. <laughs> it's bizarre how, when you can look back, you can actually you can you can see that there was a trajectory in some cases. It's really funny, actually, but it also depends, I guess, what you decide to do with it. Or what you imagine about it. So, I mean, we turned it into this. Here We're we all are. blessed. Here we are. That's right. The blessing that just keeps giving. Uh, it's wild. Uh, so now what? 
now what? I don't know. What burning questions have you got? I just imagine the conversation being amazing and thinking about it for days afterwards going, God, wasn't that great? So I know it's, we're going to find great things to talk about. So I think it's to me, I, I treasure the space, the silence, as well as the words, the discoveries along the way. Uh, I got a goodie for you. Who do you serve? How do you serve? Let's change that. Uh, how, do you, how do you serve? How do I serve? That's a good question, actually. How do I serve? You know, the first thing that wants to pop out is, is being, being me, being myself, finding out who the me is and all the different me's I can be, because somehow there's something to give in that, I think. Why else would I, why else would I be here? I, I guess I've always, that's always sort of been part of my journey is I've always been curious about why, why are we here? What is this all for? Like, why, what is the, not even the reason necessarily, but just the why is this all working the way it is and why is it all put together like this so yeah I guess I guess I think about that that's how I serve I never would have thought of that before but since really getting into into Neville and finding you and the community and Dream Driven Day yeah I do I do serve that way and who do I serve well I'm serving me who else could I be serving right I I mean I don't know I and that's not a selfish thing because when I serve me, I'm giving to others because the more I, I discover about me, the more I have to offer. I guess that's what I'm discovering and learning is the more I discover me, the more I have to give and I have to offer. And when you, you mentioned that about the group and to me, that's like, well, that's, that's the whole point. That's what gives to me is, is all those amazing people that I meet through the group and who post and who share and, they they give to me why would I not want to give to them it's that reciprocal back and forth and back and forth and back and forth uh it, yeah why wouldn't you want to do that to me that just seems like the I, I I guess I don't understand why you wouldn't want to do that because they I, gave I, so much to me they give to me it's true that it does become a family and you meet these family members and these people that you've never even met and you just absolutely adore them. And they give so much to you. Even when they post, God, my day is really shit today. And you're just like, oh, I get to give to you. That's wonderful. Because now you've also helped me. I just, I just am nuts about how all that works. I don't even need to know how it works. I just love that it does. That just gives to me endlessly. I get so much pleasure from that. I really do. I'm just like, isn't this great? How does I, this? I, I love I am, it. I am so not a fan of confidence. I, I find confidence. You know, I, I, I have so many friends that are confident about things. It's like it all becomes assertions. Yeah. I am a massive fan of curious and caring. <clears throat> and it's funny because you mentioned the groups because, uh, as, you, as you know, every Triple D group has its own group on Facebook. And it's like, the moment I become curious about someone, they post something and oh, it can be something God. totally trivial. Like, yep, had me a beer yeah. <laughs> and a photo. And, I, and, and that's, and that's cool, man. That's great. Yeah, or, yeah. or it can be something like I'm having a shit day. Yeah. But either way, that curiousness opens the door to caring. The caring opens up the door to curious. Yeah. It's, yeah I, I had a friend of mine at the pool, one of the lifeguards. He goes, Hey man, you 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 can talk to anyone. I says I do. It takes me twenty minutes when I whenever I was allowed to go to the pool. It would take me twenty <laughs> minutes to get from the door to the pool, right? And he goes, "Teach me how to do that." And so I said, "What you want to be able to do is to ask a genuine question and give a genuine compliment. To do that, you have to become intensely curious about them." I'm not confident with men, women, old people, young people, babies, dogs. I'm not confident at all. Confident doesn't even exist in me. Mm. Except I'm confident about that. I'm <laughs> curious about people. I care about people. And, and, and that 
is what gets me out of bed. That's what fuels the vision. And that's, and it's, and it's so lovely to watch as, as, as I explore and enjoy talking and sharing you and me and what we are today. There's this, here we are talking. I, I don't think I've ever on these calls ever talked about core principles. And yet here we are talking about core principles. And it's like, we both keep demonstrating our core principles again and again and again. This little recording could bless people forever as they learn about core principles. Because if somebody listens to this and goes, what are mine? Where do I live from? How do, and they really they don't make it a head game, but a noticing of, yeah, here is my thing. Oh, my yeah. God. The world is now a richer place. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so that that brings up something that when you're talking about before with art, so it's a type of noticing. That's what it is, is you're noticing. You take the time to notice because yes. I never noticed before that maybe something was beautiful, but when you take the time to notice, you just see that it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's in, it's in all sorts of things. Uh, someone in a class once said when we were learning to draw faces, he said, wow, I will never look at another face again and not think it's beautiful. Yes. How can it not be? Yes. Because yes. when you draw it, you just realize that it is beautiful. Just we've, you know, there's all these things about buying into what beautiful is, but I'm like, beauty is many, many things, you know, and if, if there's a job of the artist, if there is such a thing, but maybe it's to uncover that and to discover it and, and put it across and say, wow, this, this is just how I see and experience the world. And maybe you do too, or you can experience it through what I'm experiencing it. But yeah, it's about noticing. It's about noticing and then acting on that noticing and saying, oh, what can I notice next? Because you're never done. It's endlessly interesting. Like why? That's why I would get out of bed every single day. It's like, wow, what's the sun going to look like today? What's it going to look like when it's cloudy? What's that little spot going to look like when it's cloudy on a rainy day with wind blowing? What's the color going to look like? Because that's what keeps you. It's endlessly fascinating and interesting. How could you ever get bored? But you have to notice first. Otherwise, it just happens and you don't even see it. I'm with you. Yeah, it's. I, I, it's, I haven't found a sexy way to title the course Adventures in Noticing. But it's adventures in Noticing. Yeah. Is it real? Without noticing, you're, you're ticking boxes. Yeah. But once you start noticing and exploring, uh, wow. I, I got to go in a few minutes because my, my thing requires that I keep these under 60 minutes to do the editing, right? Uh, I want to, to make sure that people can find you any way that you want them to. So if you have art, if you have links, I know you have some stuff for sale somewhere. Anything you want to share, get to me so I can put it in the uh, things because I want people to find you. Oh, thank you. I will do that. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah. I will send those to you. Yeah, I have a Facebook and Instagram and working on building out some more aspects. And yeah, just uh, would love to get that out there. It, not even just the selling part, but it would just be nice to share with more people. That would be the lovely, that would really give to me as well. So that's exactly because yeah. like, like to me, the, 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 for me, the definition of a sale isn't just that they bought a product. That's the, that's the business definition. For me, the business of a sale is movement. Yeah. If, if, if you can inspire me just by a conversation or just by seeing a piece of your work to look at a tree differently or to pick up one of, one of my charcoal thing you do is and actually play a little bit again, that there to me is the key. Because when you play, when you dance, you, you invite other people to play and dance. And, and, and that's, and, that's mm. the win. That's the win for me as well. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's putting something of, um, I don't even want to say value, but a richness, a richness of experience. You're giving someone a richness of experience. And uh, yeah, what could be better than that? So I, I love the word appreciation. And I want to let you know how much I appreciate you, your work. Uh, and this is why I, I do these things, because the more we share each other, 
the the more it's, if if one more person on Instagram gets to appreciate your work, they can appreciate a tree. They can appreciate them, you know, sketching a tree. They can appreciate, and and to me, what's appreciation? Appreciation is increase in value. Yeah. And suddenly, this grayscale world that most people feel they live in gets to become more colorful than anything. And when I look at your work, especially when I look at the at, the, at, the, at these graphite grayscale sketches, they reveal so many magnitudes of color. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. Just ever since I've I found all of this, it's just the blessings just keep growing. I just I'm so I'm so grateful. I I never can quite express it. I'm just so grateful for everything. I think I said it in one of the DDD calls. I said, I took a chance on me that this yes. was, this was worth it. And it is. And the, the beauty of it all is that by me doing that, it does give to others and then they get to bless others. It's just, yeah. Why would you not want that? So I really appreciate you and Victoria and the community, the black belts, the people that are just signing on for the first time, because all of you give to me too. So thank you. You bet. This is beautiful. Oh, I'm going to give you a poke real quick afterwards, but uh, sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, uh, thank you. Blessings. The ultimate. <laughs> yeah, the ultimate. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, 20. Okay. Bye, Bye for now. <laughs> <laughs>